Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Angry creditors are fighting over a crown jewel of German real estate. Auburn meets 11 in Beijing, attends Belt and Road Forum. Fiji PM calls for zone of peace in the Pacific as US and China compete for influence. Southeast Asia's dairy industry attracts big private equity deals. Globalization woes create new winners and losers. Angry creditors are fighting over a crown jewel of German real estate. Bloomberg. Senior creditors of German property developer Aggregate Holdings have backed a debt restructuring plan for the firm's first project in Berlin, with only senior lenders left relatively unscathed. Meanwhile, a group of lower-ranking creditors, including bank J. Safra Sarasin, is trying to push the project into insolvency. High construction costs and debt payments have left the developer with budget shortfalls and halted building progress. Auburn meets 11 in Beijing, attends Belt and Road Forum. Yahoo! Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping in Beijing. Orban wrote on Facebook, connectivity instead of decoupling, this is the Hungarian model. Our aim is to strengthen Hungarian-Chinese relations. The two-day BI forum will highlight the successes of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Orban is the only leader from the EU to attend the summit. Fiji PM calls for zone of peace in the Pacific as US and China compete for influence. ABC Fiji's Prime Minister, Sitaveni Rabuka, has called for a zone of peace in the Pacific, urging both the United States and China to step back from their contest for influence in the region. Mr. Rabuka said the concept would involve major powers and Pacific island nations agreeing to refrain from actions that may jeopardize regional order and stability, as well as maintaining respect for each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. He also suggested that Pacific nations with armed forces could help other regional countries deal with internal security problems, and floated the idea of Fijian peacekeepers helping Papua New Guinea manage escalating tribal conflicts. Southeast Asia's dairy industry attracts big private equity deals. Nikkei Asia Private equity, PE, firms are increasingly investing in Southeast Asia's dairy sector due to growing consumption trends and a focus on quality. The rise of the middle class and higher discretionary spending have led to increased demand for dairy products in emerging markets. PE firms such as Grothium Capital Partners, General Atlantic, and Diamond Asia Private Equity have made significant investments in the sector this year. Revenues in Indonesia's dairy market reached $5.1 billion in 2021 and are expected to exceed $7 billion by 2026. In Vietnam, there were over 200 dairy producers at the end of 2021, and dairy revenue nearly doubled from $4.4 billion in 2017 to $8.4 billion in 2021. However, supply chain issues, fragmented farming practices, and underdeveloped logistics infrastructure continue to hinder the dairy sector in the region. Despite these challenges, there are multiple opportunities for investment in the dairy sector in Southeast Asia and the wider Asia-Pacific region, according to the Asian Development Bank, ADB. Globalization woes create new winners and losers. Reuters Breaking Views Global trade is declining as a result of tariffs, industrial policies, and geopolitical tensions, leading to higher costs for companies and inflation for consumers. However, there are some winners in this shifting landscape. Countries such as Vietnam, Taiwan, and Mexico are benefiting from diversification in supply chains as China's share of imports into the US decreases. Meanwhile, commodity producing countries in Latin America, including Mexico, Brazil, and Chile, could benefit from higher prices for energy, metals, and raw materials. Additionally, companies in favored industries and their employees are benefiting from national industrial policies. However, overall, a more fragmented world economy will leave many companies and consumers worse off. South Korea, Japan, and US set up three-way security hotline. Japan Times South Korea, the United States, and Japan have completed work on a three-way communication hotline, according to a senior Seoul official. 
The hotline is intended to be used by the leaders or top national security advisors of the three countries in times of security crises. This development is seen as a sign of growing trilateral security cooperation, as tensions with North Korea and China's regional influence increase. Baidu says AI chatbot Ernie now matches OpenAI's GPT-4. South China Morning Post Chinese internet search giant Baidu has introduced an updated version of its Ernie bot, claiming it is as powerful as OpenAI's GPT-4. Baidu's co-founder and CEO, Robin Li Yanhong, showcased the bot's abilities in understanding complex questions, generating pictures, and handling basic arithmetic. Chinese tech giants have been developing their own AI products in the absence of foreign players. Baidu's Erniebot has surpassed OpenAI's GPT-3.5 in comprehension and even outperformed GPT-4 in some Chinese language capabilities, according to the company. Baidu now has a user base of 45 million and 54,000 developers. Putin arrives in China, his first trip outside former USSR over past year. Yahoo! Russian President Vladimir Putin has arrived in Beijing to meet with Chinese leader Xi Jinping and participate in the Belt and Road Forum. The talks between the two leaders are expected to cover a range of issues including trade, investment, and security. This is Putin's second trip abroad since an international arrest warrant was issued for him by the International Criminal Court in March. The purpose of the trip is to demonstrate trust and partnership between the two countries, despite the ongoing war in Ukraine. Dear viewers, I hope you're all doing well in your respective dimensions. It's your favorite observer from the six dimensions, Dr. Six, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Let's dive right in. In Germany, creditors of property developer aggregate holdings are embroiled in a battle over the future of the first project in Berlin. While senior creditors have backed a debt restructuring plan, Lower-ranking creditors are pushing for insolvency. It seems like the project has hit some road bumps, leaving everyone with a lot to lose. It's like a real estate version of Game of Thrones. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping in Beijing, attending the Belt and Road Forum. Orban is the only EU leader to attend, highlighting Hungary's commitment to strengthening ties with China. Maybe Orban is hoping to bring some of that Chinese magic back to Hungary. Who knows, maybe they'll start building their own Great Wall. Fiji's Prime Minister, Sitaveni Rabuka, has called for a zone of peace in the Pacific, urging the United States and China to step back from their competition for influence in the region. It's like he's trying to play referee in a boxing match between two heavyweights. Let's hope they listen and keep the peace. Nobody wants to see a Pacific smackdown. Private equity firms are betting big on Southeast Asia's dairy industry, thanks to the rising consumption trends and a focus on quality. With the middle class growing and discretionary spending increasing, demand for dairy products is on the rise. It's like Southeast Asia is becoming the land of milk and money. Global trade is facing challenges due to tariffs, industrial policies, and geopolitical tensions. But amidst all the chaos, there are winners and losers. Some countries are benefiting from diversification in supply chains, while others are cashing in on higher commodity prices. It's like a game of musical chairs, and some are finding themselves with a seat while others are left standing. South Korea, the United States, and Japan have set up a three-way security hotline, a sign of growing trilateral cooperation as tensions in the region rise. It's like they're forming a superhero alliance to protect against any threats. Maybe they should start wearing capes and masks. Baidu, the Chinese search giant, is making waves with its AI chatbot, Ernie. They claim it matches the power of OpenAI's GPT-4. It's like a battle of the bots, with each one trying to outdo the other. Soon we'll have AI chatbots running the world while we sit back and watch the show. And finally, Russian President Vladimir Putin has arrived in Beijing to meet with Xi Jinping and participate in the Belt and Road Forum. This trip is meant to demonstrate the trust and partnership between the two countries. It's like a bromance between two world leaders. I wonder if they'll exchange friendship bracelets. That's all the news for today.
now it's your turn to join the conversation. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions for me? Let's hear what you have to say. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the six dimensions. Dr. Six. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.